Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and here we are back on the Rutland Lathe. This will be, uh, let's look under the old girl's apron, part nine. All right, we're going to start putting our carriage and our apron back together. We, we, uh, we're up to that point. Uh, we, we've got that hole drilled and tapped so that the tailstock won't come in and crash. We haven't made the part yet, but we have the hole, and, and that's what we needed. We need to have the machine work done uh, before we start assembling this. We're going to start off and we're going we're gonna to take our wipers and we have our piece of felt and we're going to be cutting and mounting our felts. After that, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean up the rods and, and have that ready to hang the apron. And then we'll start uh, assembling the cross uh, screw and the slide and all of that. Uh, just before we get started on that, our, our flex tubing that we we did a little research. We wanted uh, a tubing that was flexible and also was uh, oil uh, resistant uh, so that it can transfer the lubricating oil to our ports. And we're gonna have a flex joint here and also we needed to have it flex and go through the wire cable link um, or cable carrier. Um, everybody's got a little different name for them. But anyway, uh, we, we ended up having that. Uh, we, we picked up um, the little tiny compression sleeves as well. So with these little tiny sleeves, I'll give you a close up of those themselves. With this inserted into that tube there, uh, it really does get a 100% a uh, grip on, on that tubing. And uh, so we got some straight compressions, some 90, and we have a few T's to get us started and laying this all out. Now we'll start mounting this up and playing with these after we have the whole unit together uh, so we can start laying out and planning where we're going to have our hard copper tube and where we'll have our flex lines. Another thing that we had to do before we put the cross slide together was to go ahead and make a CAD cartoon assisted drawing and we're going to be machining this with our CAD um, and we'll, we'll be making this from scratch and doing it right here on this lathe and then taking it out of the lathe pulling our cross slide across, uh, apart installing the new cross slide and then putting it back together um, is the main, I, I wanted to do this on the uh, closing as well, and this lathe just happens to be first in line to, to do this. Now we've made the new nuts, and I might even modify the set of nuts once again. We, we all talk about the set screws there versus the wedge going down, and yes, if the two set screws were down on each side we can't stagger them like this because there's not enough room underneath this nut to to drop the nut down to make make it equal that way but we we do have enough room to fatten these this nut in the in the cavity it has room to move back and forth um we, we have enough actually it's staying stationary with the carriage so it does travel a little bit but it only has a little pocket area but it's wide enough to go ahead and have a set screw exactly uh, three o'clock and nine o'clock from the lead screw so and and that's true it's the ultimate um, equalness as far as the pressure on the screws and pulling them equally and not pitching them they can't really theoretically they can't pitch like this uh, because they're bolted solid to the top but when you loosen something up and then tension it and then tighten it back down you could you could be not taking that complete air gap completely out of there because of the design of this there's a little bit of room for air on the up and down pins and those bores and the face of this and bolting that down and all of that so um, that's why coming down and pushing exactly side to side on each side equal with the split line of that lead screw would be the ultimate and I appreciate everybody commenting in on that and if they were like 10 o'clock and, and uh, 5 o'clock it'd do the same thing you know as long as they were exactly straight across from each other it would do the same thing um, 
All right, and we're but right now we're going to put this set in there, and we're also going to be cutting ourselves a piece of felt to go in here, and the oiler will come down and it will drip on this felt, and that will lubricate, and the felt the felt will keep in between these nuts clean and also create the lubrication so that there's always a positive flow of oil on these lead screws that I always thought it was a important important aspect just like having the uh, the nuts lubricated on the K&T or the bridge port or anything else like that um, it not too many people come and slide their bridge port into oil location and pull out the little screw and put some oil in there on the nuts um, that's a, a design and it's in the manual and everything else but it it hardly ever gets done um, and if we're putting an auto oiler in here you might as well make it hundred percent auto and oil in every part uh, possible um, okay so let's go ahead and and uh, we'll take our CAD and our lead screw and set it to the side here we are going to go ahead and ream this hole out a quarter inch um, diameter because the hard oil or the hard line that's going to come in and feed that that screw it's going to come out and go on over here and i'm going to have it run off there i'm going to design that after i have this all together but i want to have that hole done before i put the nuts and the and the felt and everything else underneath there because i don't want the little chips and debris to fall down in there all right so let's start getting this thing together uh, because i, I want to be able to crank this back and forth and check our alignment of the headstock now there is one thing and that's why I left these up here so I didn't miss the conversation here because I've already I put the the bed down on here cleaned it underneath oiled the ways put the bed down and then I put these lower supports that bolt up and underneath and they keep the carriage from lifting now I've taken a feeler gauge just to just so I I know what there is there now. At any time you can drop these down and machine them so that you can decrease the clearance and and create a more um, stout bed, uh, meaning that there's no room for it to lift. If you were born upside down and you were causing lift on your bar, you 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 may actually create enough force to want to lift your bed up, and uh, you can actually machine these keepers on the bottom so that it is so close that just the film of oil is in there and you're not you're minimizing the amount of lift no matter what you're gonna you're gonna have a lift um, just it depends on the clearance in there now I can barely get the inch uh, one and a half thousands on the back I can get a little bit more on the front right now I'm just gonna leave that you can also check it by putting your mag base here and an indicator on here and then lifting up and down pushing up and down to, for your full travel and you'll be able to measure your clearance and then you can there's there's two faces down here the mounting face and and the, and the sliding face and that's what you adjust to make make up that clearance okay if you're butt tight and 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 when you tighten this down you lock down the carriage you know you don't have any clearance in there and then you need to you need to create clearance um, and so your feel of gauge one one way or the other under your sliding or there uh, most of the time you get a lathe or whatever that's already been taken care of and you're not going to have one that's too tight um, I, I, I shouldn't say you will never but you shouldn't okay just like in the several kits that I made for the felt wipers I machine these out on the x-carve you seen those done and I slice off a piece of felt that's roughly the width of the large cut in here um, and long enough to make the four wipers out of so what I do first is I go ahead and I take it and we got we got the width right now the height here is one and three eighths so I go ahead and I take a I like this little tiny square because it lets me put pressure down on here but hold it square with this so I go ahead and I give this uh, one and three eighths there and holding it with the uh, wood underneath I'm actually able to go ahead and cut that nice and sharp and clean now this basically is the height and the width alright so now all I do is I go ahead and I take and I gotta nip the corners and create two holes 
and also the shape. And I try to cut that shape as close as I possibly can here, but a little bit, a little bit proud doesn't matter because when you put it in there and you slide this oil or or this wiper down over there, you're going to be you want a little positive pressure on that felt. So I leave it about a sixteenth of an inch um, out around that opening there. Okay, so we're going to nip off some corners here, get this thing to fit in here, and we just kind of double check and. That looks good. We're gonna have a hole real close up in here anyway, so um, that that's not gonna matter right there. And now our next our next angle right here is about right there. I'm doing a little cheating here because I can I'll, I can see that. I just hold this down. There we go. It doesn't have to be exactly right tight into the corner. You can have a little bit. All right, now those two holes there, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, put our Sharpie down in here. And that marks where those two holes go. Now those two holes we're going to make with a hole punch. And then we use our little lead ingots that we pour to actually back up our punch. All right, so we're gonna punch that over here on this side. And we just center this right on over the dot there. All right, and we'll do the same thing over here. All right, now let's check our fit. All right, we put that in, all right. Now we wanted to just check our fit for our screws. And there's no problem, screws go right through there. All right, now we wanna go ahead, we're gonna mark this again with our Sharpie. Alright, now you can see you can see the Sharpie line there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to cut it so that the width of that Sharpie line remains there. One thing that's tough is this is a little bit this is actually flat right here at the very top. I just kind of give it a slice like that. A little like that. Okay, and There we go. Takes a little bit of work at it. Don't worry about a little fuzz sticking up because you're going to cram that in there and it's going to be part of your, your wiper. We haven't even added oil yet. Okay. Now that may be a little bit thick, a little bit much in there, but we're going to put it down on, on here and we're going to hold it in place. Fits right in there. Nice. Okay. Let me bring you around so you can see. Okay. Here's a look at, at the wiper. And when you, when you put just put it over there you can see how it's raised up off of the surface there you can you can say you got plenty of clearance in here all the way around but when you press this down into place there it'll be putting compression in on that felt all right then we can put our two screws in here and tighten those up all right I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some oil in here and we're going to get these mounted on here. And I'm just going to 
lube up and oil the felt itself before I slide them into place. Okay, we're just giving, this is whey oil. I always keep this can of whey oil. You can squirt some down in there. You don't want to be shy. This thing wants to be really soaking. Okay. There we go. An old timer got me to making ways with felt wipers because lots of times it's not a good practice of blowing air in around your ways but by building quality sets of wipers and not blowing your air in this way here but you know blow you can blow things off of here but building wipers like this allow you to have a few features that you don't normally uh, practice and uh, this gives a boundary where chips this is such a close fit right here on the Delrin that it, it's keeping chips from getting there and then the felt is actually wiping any minute stuff that gets down underneath okay a couple more squirts because it looked like it only filled that felt up about halfway there all right and Yeah, you can see oil squirting all around. That's cool. Okay. Now I'm rent somewhere here. There it is, under my arm. Excellent, excellent. Okay, before we forget about it, we do want to go ahead and we'll give a squirt down inside our little oilers here. And we're just going to put a little piece of tissue in here so that we can pull this out and when we get ready to put in those oilers. We'll go ahead and put a squirt in over here and put that one in as well. There we go. Okay, two more to cut out. Okay, I just cut that one out and roughed out this one here. Uh, I have a little bit of extra on, on the length of these because these are 1 200 by 1 200. And this is the extra piece of felt uh, that's, uh, that I put in the kit there with the, the links I cut. All right, so with the 1 2 1 2 squares the and squares are a lot easier than the other ones they, they those were a little bit of work okay but just go ahead and put the same thing give them the dots and also the line around all right so we'll cut and punch those holes in those okay now I was able to push in and down on these other ones over here and let's see if we can do this from this side. I might have to come around that side. When you get the right one in the right spot. <laughs>
that was too funny. I, I tried to keep them from getting mixed up, and then I was trying to put that one up here. And the difference is not the not the outline or the square, but the the actual threads. That's why I may I I make the blanks and the kits without putting the whole pattern in, so that each individual can go ahead and and do that the holes themselves there we go all right we're good we're good for a year or so and then we'll go ahead and and that firmed it up quite a bit too because we got that pressure on it. It'll take a while for that to break in just a little bit. Um, but that's going to be excellent. All right, that firms it up. That's great. Okay, we're going to put in just a couple more drops of oil in here. Put our little plugs back in here. We're just kind of looking at that oil going in and out. Awesome, and we can we can see things starting to get wet. That's nice. Okay, now let's go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ream that hole out, and then we're all done with the work here, and we can start we can start assembling our screw and our nuts and, and stuff we got to find us the uh, the screw for for our plate here so that we'll be ready to put that on there okay we finished reaming that hole and we slid this on here so that we could get the feel of the gib that we'd like and we'd adjusted it um, because when we start assembling this and we got the nuts and all of that we're not going to have the free slide feel to it all right so we've got the cover set the cover off to the side here and we're going to slide our lead screw in here and of course this has got to sit on here and that dimple's got to line up in there All right, and then we have two sets of thrust bearings. There's a race and a bearing, and a race and a bearing. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna blow the the dust dust out of these. This one here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and wipe the, the races. Okay. One goes on this side here. Okay, and the other one goes in there. And we'll wipe that one and set it there. And the same there. Okay, now this chamber on both sides, there's one bearing goes in on that side of this and one goes on here. This holds the thrust. Um, there's no oil passage in there yet we may put one in there when we pull this apart and put the lead screw in there but for right now we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to grease the bearings themselves and this is just a good quality um, wheel bearing grease I'm just getting a little bit on this race right in here All right, 
Now we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to pack some into this. A little cage there kind of holds it in there. Okay, we'll put one, one facing that one there. Okay, and we'll put that one facing that way. Slide this one in here. And this one on top of here. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, this goes on here like this. And we've got two screws here that go in. Lightly tension both of them at the same time so you can get the feel of it and, and you want to uh, Make sure she's not bound anywhere. Okay. All right, next we need uh, the dial and uh, the thread. We'll round up that. And we need to go ahead and find our point here and tighten up that screw right there and I believe it's this this one right here we had talked about this being a key or a key in this instead of a dimple but the wall thickness of it is so thin <clears throat> all right I'm happy with that all right, now when we tension up this bearings, that'll lift the lead screw and then that'll be in its position and we want to adjust, we want to adjust the bearing tolerance so that we control um, the amount of in play on those bearings, which we want to eliminate that because you can't, if you have those bearings moving back and forth, then when you dial, you're going to have a little bit of backlash, even if your nuts don't have any. Okay, so you want, you, if you want zero backlash on your bearings and you want to have nearly zero on your nuts. All right, we, we screwed our dial on. Now I'm going to, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm going to go ahead and. All right. Um, okay, this is a solid. And this nut here goes up against there and holds that solid there. So in, in reality, you're, you're kind of defeating yourself here um, be, because you're expecting this to spin on here, but yet you're almost using it to hold your bearing thrust at the same time. So once you tighten this up here, there's no free space for this to actually physically turn if you want to keep that minimum backlash in here. What I propose to do, not now, but when I pull this back apart and we put the, the new lead screw in here that we will machine in the spring, the, the center of this I'll bore out so that I'll have this handle and I'll make it so that it, it fits on here between two sections there and, and has a spring loaded so that I can always constantly just rotate this around by hand. But the center will be locked solid and will be holding the thrust on these bearings um, positive and uh, so right now I'm gonna I'm just I brought this together and I'm gonna go ahead and put a set screw in there and set screw in there right now because I know that my backlash 
and everything else is pretty pretty firm in there because I can't spin this here when I hold this so there's there's no play in there it's it's uh it's right on it's right on the money there all right um, instead of just putting the set screw in here and the set screw in the other hole there like we we found when we pulled the thing apart I have I have a lead shot here I have two of them and I'm gonna put them in there I'm gonna put the uh, the butt end down so that the pointed head is facing up towards me and I want to just make sure that it's sitting down on those threads and I just went and dressed up my little punch here and I'm tapping this down. I want to squish that down in there. And I chose to squish it this way here. So it lays out pretty good right on those threads. And then I'm going to put the set screw in here. On top of that. And I'm going to lock that down. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop this one in here. This is a little bit harder. This is a pretty far down cavity here. First shot. <laughs> I rehearsed that and messed it up like four times. <laughs> All right, we got that nice and flat. Now that's just going against that round diameter, but it's still important that it doesn't dig that that cup point in there okay all right <clears throat> now we're ready for our handle we cleaned up our handle it was pretty clean it, it just had a little bit of stuff on the back side here now remember we had to lock the gear in and we had to twist and pull this thing off of here because it's a press fit all right now um, we don't have nothing up here yet and we want it on there all right do we do we take um, Pierre and Phil's hammer soft side and just drive that in there and knock the crap out of them bearings not today okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go get the torch and I'm going to warm this up until we can just go like that. Okay, I'm set up here. I went and got a snap gauge because well, this is this is how I... Everybody goes, hey, how hot do you have to heat that up? Um, you have to heat it up until it's hot enough. Um, I, <clears throat> I fix um, devices that like the snap gauges here. Because theoretically, this is, this is that width right there uh, minus a, a little bit but I'll be able to feel how easy that goes in and out that gives me an idea how far I've actually swallowed the thing in size okay so I'll leave that right there I do have my hot gloves here I've got a piece of wood here so I'm not damaging in any of my equipment here and and I'm right here local to the project so you heat it and you put it on that's the name of the game right all right we got our torch bigger torch here doesn't mean we're gonna have bigger flame just I'm gonna turn it down here all right now we're just gonna kind of warm this whole thing up Okay, it's already over a couple hundred degrees. That's about where you go. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, a little bit faster than that, maybe.
Feels like it's rolling a little bit. I think it's worth a try. And I got the little hammer here just in case. Okay, she's already locked on there. Okay, at least I know I didn't bang the crap out of the uh, the bearings in there. All right. That was the first time I used the Delrin inside there, you guys. <laughs> okay, I've cut my felt. You can see it on the outside. All right, now what does it look like? Looks like that. Got a hole for the lead screw to go through and two holes for the set screws to go through. That will pretty much keep it from rotating. And this is a trial um, piece here. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this screwed onto the lead screw and how it fits. Okay, I've got the, the two blocks. Make a note that the, the, the two marks of one are on there. And so the first one gets on here a little bit. And even as we straighten this thing here, uh, it does it has just a little bit of wobble out there at the end. All right, now, got the next one here. Now remember we have that dimension in here and I think I'm too far apart right here. Because that's like one four. I'll have to look at my notes there. Yeah, I measured over on this one here and it's one three here. So I just squeezed a little bit harder and I was able to get one three and it picked up so um it is looking really good right there. Looks pretty square in there too, that, that felt. It's holding those pretty good. I'm gonna bring this on down in this neck of the woods right here. Okay, I think I'm gonna squirt some oil on this thing now. I can squirt some oil in here too on the lead screw. Especially on that side there where it feeds it in. Alright, now we'll feed we'll feed it from the other side on this one. You can see how it stopped uh, actually taking it on in. See if this side here will stop taking it in. That just pretty much tells me that the, now this is starting to feed out and you can actually see the lead screw getting wet over here. Okay, so when oil starts feeding in here, it definitely is gonna, gonna be lubing that nut in both directions. This is gonna, it's an experiment. All right. Put this over here. Actually, got to remember not to leave anything with red dye on any of your silver paint. I already had to touch up another spot. All right. We can use a napkin on our oil can. All right. We're going to grab another napkin so we can wipe those ways nice and clean before we put a light coat of oil and slide that on. Now we remembered we had some of these... Uh, tacky rags I'm not these things stick to your hands you know that give me the weeby G almost I'd rather scratch my nails on a chalkboard and use these rags sometimes it's the way they feel they got that funky feel I'm 
Okay. Do the same thing to this side. Look at those nice scrape surfaces. Never would have thought. Thank you very much. This oil can has had nothing but whey oil in it since I think I got this oil can back in oh late 80s. Maybe mid 80s. I actually had two of them. I gave one to uh, Al Sledge at North Star Propeller when I left there. All right. All right, I'm bringing this back all the way this way. It's, you know, I mean, not all the way, but I mean, close enough to where I know that <clears throat> the height uh, adjustment here, because I'm getting ready to drop these slugs in, and these slugs actually kind of go down, and once they're level, once they're level, and they're holding those slugs down there level, that's the height you want them to be. You don't want any stress on these things. Bringing them in for those two flats there. Making sure that they're... Okay, they're light. Just light. Alright, now our two Allens. They go down there. I think they're over there. I'm going to have to... We found our two Allens. And the air compressor stopped running. So we decided to, we decided to wait for it. All right, now I'm just getting these down. It's kind of a combination of these. Because I put that flat in there so that they, they wouldn't be just like rolling around in there. They'd stay pretty well s straight. All right, and now remember, anytime that you're gonna do adjustment after this, you, you just loosen this one here, and it, you, you kind of keep this one, for right now, keep this one locked down. There, there's a little bit of room for those to grow, and uh, you can just do it all on this one here for right now, because these are kind of like centered right now, in the, in the play that they're allotted. Okay, and there we go. There we go. All right, how does that feel? Feels really nice. Haha. <laughs> Okay, we'll be playing a little bit with the set screws because we want to make sure that they're just not like just sitting there. We want to have a little bit of uh, uh, tension on them and we'll, we'll, we'll go through with an indicator after we get this rolling back and forth. All right, now here's, here's our cover here. And we're just going to go ahead and put the, uh, put the screw in that um, right here.
we're going to be lifting this off a little bit later to I wonder if that's the actual screw in there it clears <clears throat> but it does look like it is sticking up a little bit I would feel better if it was flush all right we're gonna be pulling this back off and we can do what we what we can with that All right, next let's get on to the feed rods and the apron.